Hey, Happy New Year, everybody. Peter, KJ5AJB here. So today, I'm going to try and demonstrate uh, as best I can uh, how to get an SDR waterfall display for your Kenwood TS590SG. And uh, so first off, I'm going to kind of give you an overview of what I got on uh, my Mac Mini that I've got connected to my Kenwood. It's uh, on the other side of the room, so I'll be screen sharing from, from this Mac here on it so let me uh, switch over to it real quick and uh, so you can see there in the lower left is my Kenwood I've got uh, the uh, SDR software up here this is cubic SDR you can see some of the modulation there I'll turn the volume up a little bit so you can get a sample of what it sounds like So you can see the modulation happening in the upper left, upper right corner there. Uh, I'll expand this green in a little bit when I do the setup uh, demonstration for you, and uh, I'll minimize some of this stuff out of the way so we can uh, get a look at it here. So let me go ahead and uh, mute that guy. I'll turn it down so it doesn't interfere with me. And switch over here to scene number three so it gets rid of some of the windows. Minimize this guy. This is my ham clock down on the bottom right hand side. I've got a, a Novato Quadra connected to a, a, a HDMI capture and uh, displaying it in uh, QuickTime. I'll show you how to do that on another video. So this is, let me bring up my uh, browser here so I can show you a couple things. So this is the type of cable you'll need. It's an RCA mail to SMA mail. Okay. The SMA end screws into the SDR device and the RCA plugs into the back of the Kenwood and I'll show you in the uh, documentation for the Kenwood where it plugs into, okay? And uh, this one here is only 12 inches long, so you'll have to decide what you need. You can easily, sometimes when you buy the SDR device, it comes with a cable, and you can just cut that cable and put an RCA connector on the end. That's what I did anyways. All right. Close that out. So this is the SDR device I'm using. It's the RTL SDR, the R860. And this one is version 3. And uh, that, if you can usually catch it on sale sometimes too. They also, sometimes you'll see a, uh, a bigger package where we're coming with uh, some other accessories if you poke around Amazon for it. So I'm done. I'll put the links in the uh, description so you can get a better look on your own. All right, so now I'm going to switch to um, the front of my Kenwood here, if I can. Let's see here. There we go. All right, I'm going to bring the menu up on it so you can see that. One of the settings you have to do in the Kidwood itself, you have to set the DRV port up for the to antenna. And I believe it's number 85. We'll double check that. All right, so you can see there, menu number 85, antenna, the DRV connector connector function so it says a n t for antenna and then once you set that there's a if you look right above the word scrolling the drv connector there there's a little asterisk or star there that tells you that it's actually set to the antenna so and basically what this does is it puts your receive 
to the DRV port on the back so you can route that to your SDR device. And uh, the Kenwood is set up to where it cuts that off when you transmit, so you won't be uh, blasting RF into your SDR device, and it works pretty good. So, all right. So let me put it back, turn the menu function off on that. Go back to number three here. So if you can see it here, I've got the PDF up for the Kenwood manual. And on the back of the Kenwood here, there's the DRV on the right-hand side next to the receive antenna RCA jack there. So that's where you want to hook your RCA connector to is the DRV port there. Okay. So I'm doing this on a Mac. So I'm using Cubic SDR. And uh, it's a pretty good little program here. So I'll, uh, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and uh, quit and open it back up so you can see uh, the functionality of it. All right, so when you first open it up, it'll pop this little window up looking for your SDR device. And mine is right here. And then you click Start. And there we go. All right. So then up here under, it incorporates rig control also. So up here, what you want to do is you set your model in here. So you can go all the way down to Kenwood. I went too far. So you can see I've got Kenwood TS590SG selected here. My serial rate is 115.2, and that's the same rate I've got set for the USB port on the Kenwood itself. Okay, then the USB port from the Kenwood is plugged into the back of my Mac Mini. Control port's not used. You want to have track modem turned on, following center, follow rig, control rig, and then enable rig. Okay. So one of the quirks is that sometimes it'll connect right away you'll see the frequency in this area here uh, but the other quirk is uh, this it's it's not doing it so you have to actually manually select whether you're lower or upper sideband so I'm going to select upper sideband here then you click in this box here and you'll notice there it connected all right so it also you can create bookmarks in here you can see on the left hand column here where I've got a couple of the nets I I work with over there, and then the one we were just recently on is uh, this fourteen three twenty eight. So if I double click that, it'll change the radio to fourteen three twenty eight. That's got a little go down a little bit here. So if I bring my uh, radio window up there, you can see it's at fourteen three twenty eight. And I'll change it to this one, and you can see the radio change again. There you go. So this block here, your bandwidth, I usually have like around 27 or 2400 for voice. And uh, this is your center frequency marked over here. There's a lot of other options to the uh, to what you can do in these windows here as far as dragging things around. It gives you a little pop-up tell you what you need to do for to drag a range or whatever and uh, you can actually make it go full screen if you want to on your Mac and you can just have a huge waterfall so But for me, I keep it up over there in the corner. And my ham clock here. And the knit logger there. So. And uh, so that's about it. I'll uh, unmute the uh, radio again so you can see some of the modulation going 
and uh, I'll have to turn it back up in order for you to get some sound going in. So stand by. And there we go. That's all there is to it. So I'll put the links to that stuff down in the uh, the uh, description. And uh, we'll go from there. And uh, so I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, it gives you some uh, functionality for your receiver. And uh, till the next time, I'll do uh, I'll do one on how I got the ham clock on my desktop too. So just with a video capture thing, so it was all, and uh, it's pretty simple. It's the simplest way I found anyways. So anyways, don't forget to like and subscribe, and uh, thanks again. Peter, KJ5AJB73.